A world-first cancer treatment program is being rolled out across Australia, aimed at curing or prolonging the lives of more than 1,000 children every year. The Zero Childhood Cancer Program involves a sophisticated genetic sequencing test that looks at the alterations that may be driving the cancer's growth. A database of more than 120 drugs can then target that unique alteration. Joining us now is Professor David Eisenstadt from the Royal Children's Hospital. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Professor. Firstly, just explain for us a bit more about how this genetic sequencing works and then what you do with it in terms of then helping to inform the treatment options that these sick kids can, can get. So uh, in the new program, uh, which will be for all newly diagnosed patients, uh, children with cancer in Australia, uh, instead of the ones that were just hard to treat or uh, uh, progressed, is uh, tumor uh, will be sampled as well as the child's blood. Um, and uh, we will do whole genome sequencing, which is you know, every single gene in the human body uh, to identify alterations. And what's different is that many other countries have more of a targeted panel and could perhaps miss things. So this would be very complete. Uh, the challenge is the amount of data is, that's being uh, derived is, is significant. And so how to, how to manage that and the uh, uh, Zero program, which is headquartered at the Children's Cancer Institute in Sydney, has a tremendous group of bioinformaticians that can curate the data, identify the alterations, and then uh, they have pediatric oncologists involved, a new breed that we call molecular pediatric oncologists who can help interpret the data and then work with others to identify potential drugs that can be used. Um, so it's a significant effort. And then, of course, uh, they, uh, we hold weekly uh, meetings called tumor boards, molecular tumor boards, to discuss cases of interest and get everyone's input as, because sometimes there may be more than one drug that's potentially useful for the child. Uh, so it's a significant program. It's national. And uh, what's different from other countries is that all children who are diagnosed will be tested. It's very exciting. And so when you talk about all children, that means it doesn't matter where the child lives around Australia, they'll have access to this program. And, and does it work for all cancer types? So that, that's really a bit of an unknown because we've been focusing on those difficult, hard to treat cancers. And so uh, what's gonna come out of this with kids who are newly diagnosed for which uh, we have good treatments already, for example, uh, overall 80 to 85% of children, uh, all, all comers with cancers uh, are not cured, but uh, in remission at five years. And so it's gonna change the paradigm a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, there, there are only a limited number of drugs. Uh, the driver for drug creation is not pediatric cancers, it's adult cancers. Um, and sometimes uh, the drugs are not available in Australia. So that's a separate challenge. Um, the statistics are that if we can identify a change, and uh, right now the, uh, the Zero program can identify it in over 90% of children with cancer, uh, about 70% of those will find some sort of actionable target. Um, and then of those, um, about 70% at the present time will have some sort of response. So it's still early days. Um, so there are, yes, going to be children that don't necessarily have a genetic change that we can target, but we've never been able to look at this at a population level to understand how many they, there are. Um, so it's a major step forward. It's not the last step. So David, when we look at kids with cancer, what sort of numbers are we talking about here? Just how many Aussie children are, are being diagnosed with cancers each year? And, and is that number remaining steady or, or are you seeing a growth in diagnoses each year? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, right now, uh, we think uh, based upon our statistics and forecasts at, at all the nine centres in Australia that treat children with cancer, that we'll uh, be achieving about 1,000 new diagnoses a year. And overall, on a given year, we have 2,000 children that are under treatment because some of the treatments last for more than a year. Um, so the, the numbers, are they increasing? Hard to know. I think because we're so good at treating upfront most cancers and we have more survivors, um, we have more children eligible to relapse, so the numbers are actually increasing. We're also uh, better at making diagnoses, and uh, children are referred to earlier, and there's more index of suspicion. Uh, we have better tools. So the question is, is that really an increase overall, or are we just better at doing what we used to do, uh, children presenting earlier, better and faster diagnoses? 
Professor, this program focuses on, on children, as you've explained, but do you hope that we will get to a point where all Australians diagnosed with cancer will have the same access to that genetic sequencing to help inform their treatment options? Is that the direction that we're heading? That's an important question. If you take 100 people all ages with cancer, how many will actually have or be children with cancer? That number is anywhere from 3 to 5%, depending upon where you cut off uh, the age range for a child. Is it 15 through the World Health Organization or 18, which is in most children's hospitals in Australia? Um, and um, population between 17 and 24 is another 3 to 4%. So that means let's just say 90 to 93% of cancers are in the adult age range. And so that's a large number of patients per year diagnosed. And the, the incidence of cancer goes up as the population ages. So it's going to take a tremendous effort in some ways to make um, sequencing even less expensive, to have things automated, um, and to be able to roll it out to the entire population. However, I would counter that pediatric cancer uh, and this is a quote from a colleague of mine, is both big enough and small enough. Some of the principles that we uh, derive from this, uh, the observations, the ability to create these data sharing networks will be adopted in adult cancer. And uh, I think uh, before I retire, we will see majority of adults with access to this. We'd all like to see that. Dr. David Eisenstadt, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you very much.